Hello everybody. Uh, in this uh, quick video, I want to highlight uh, one of the new and exciting uh, developments uh, that's going to be rolled out to the public uh, with the March 10 release. And it is the ability to set up and uh, print using uh, FFF, uh, Fused Filament Fabrication. So we here we have a uh, common model that is uh, designed for and going to be printed with FFF. It's a pedal fixture. Uh, jigs and fixtures are a pretty common uh, use case for FFF and uh, we're in the uh, design environment and we can go into the manufacturing environment and uh, directly go into the additive tab and start setting up a new uh, FFF uh, print. So let's go ahead uh, by clicking the setup and we can either drop use the drop down and choose the operation type as additive or uh, we can choose a, a machine and go into uh, some of our additive filters and see what kind of uh, samples are shipped. So here uh, we are seeing uh, all the uh, machines that are supported because I have uh, the manufacturing extension enabled. Of course, um, the FFF printers that we are enabling are uh, machines like the, the ANEX, the generic uh, FFF, the big reps, the Creality's, Prusa's and uh, Ultimakers and XYZ printing. Uh, you can search by them by using the uh, search bar. So, for example, if you wanted to just uh, filter by Ultimakers, you could do that. You could search by the vendor uh, on the right-hand side. So if you wanted to look for the Creality's, you could say uh, Creality, and then that they would show up here, for example. So uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And then once you find the printer uh, that you want to print with, you can uh, drag and drop it into your local or cloud folder and uh, make edits. Uh, to either the existing ones or the generic FFF printer that we ship. So in this case, let's go with a Ultimaker. I'm going to um, go to all, choose an Ultimaker here, and I'll choose an Ultimaker 2. And I'll even bring it into my uh, local um, user library. And as you can see, once it's in my user library, I have a couple more options. I can uh, choose the post that I'm going to use and the print settings that I want to use for this specific printer. So we could go ahead and tackle that right now or at the end of the process. So I'm just going to choose it right away. The post that I'm going to choose um, is once again, is from my uh, post library. So I can choose it from my local or my cloud location for the different uh, printers that I have posts for. And if I uh, don't have a post, I can always uh, go and download it from the, uh, the uh, Autodesk Fusion slash HSM post uh, webpage. Um, so here I'm going to just assign a FFF uh, Ultimaker uh, 2 post with this and uh, hit select. And uh, just like uh, how I selected the post, I can also select the print setting. And the print settings allow me to choose a material and some uh, print uh, options. So if I'm going to print with a PLA that is 2.8 millimeters thick, for example, with a certain nozzle size, I can choose that one and continue. And if I wanted to make edits, of course, I can do that later. So I hit select and now my geometry is on that build volume. Uh, well, not quite. It's uh, right now outside of that build volume, but when I hit okay, it will be automatically placed on the, uh, the build volume. And as you can see, it's been just uh, moved into that build uh, volume in this setup. So what do we have in here? We have the settings that we have chosen and we have the visualization of the platform. I can do one of uh, two things here first. I want to make sure that I want to choose the right position to print this with. So I can either do that manually by moving operations or minimizing build height operations or placing the part on the platform option, or I can use a automatic orientation tool. So let's go ahead and use the automatic orientation tool, which uh, allows me to uh, type in some options here for critical angles to minimize support structure generation, for example, and how much above the build platform I want this object to be. So let's say it's going to be touching the build platform. And then how do I want the results to be ranked? So in my case, I want to minimize the supports, which means I'm going to make the support volume a very high importance in the ranking of the outcome. So when I hit OK, well, I have to choose the object, right? So here we go. Select the object, hit OK, and uh, the outcomes are available for me to uh, look at. So the orientation results, as you can see, the, the, the rank number one is the one that gives me the, the best possible outcome for minimizing the build heights. Uh, I'm sorry, the build uh, supports. 
I can toggle through some of these options to see different orientations, but of course they will give me different uh, support volumes. So let's go with the first rank one. Hit OK, and now I have my model oriented. Uh, I've already chosen a print setting, but if I wanted to edit that at this point, I can either edit that through here, and I have a basic edit option here that allows me to control things like the layer, height, and, uh, and some other options, such as do I want support structures, do I want a raft, uh, do I want um, any kind of uh, nozzle priming, and I can do that here, or if I wanted to, I could get into the individual um, tabs and uh, have a much uh, more control over each of these uh, uh, options. So this release supports multi-extruder printers, and that's why we have two extruder options here, and I can control uh, you know, which, which settings I want to print with, with extruder 1 versus extruder 2 for printers that do support multi-extruder. Um, and, and this list kind of goes uh, on for a little bit. And of course, this is uh, a lot of information to play with, but uh, it's important to give those options. Uh, we do have, uh, for some of the more common options, such as infill options and supports, we have kind of broken those settings uh, and also exposed them in, in these dialogues. So for example, for the infill, I can either control the infill information in this little dialogue, for example, I can choose a rectilinear versus honeycomb or star, right? Or I can come into the print settings and control the infill from, from this same uh, detailed information, plus the infill options that are in this same uh, dialog dropdown with the rectilinear versus honeycomb versus star. Uh, same thing with supports. I can choose to have the supports enabled or disabled from this dialog and uh, expose and modify all the options available to to the supports. So here I have the supports on and uh, at this point I'm basically ready to go. Uh, I can uh, generate the um, the toolpath and then simulate the toolpath. So let's go ahead and uh, hit generate um, which will um, create the toolpath for me. And as you can see we see a little bit of a progress here. It's 90% and uh, it will go to 100% momentarily. And once we have the toolpath, we can visualize that, right? So we can go to the simulate the additive toolpath. And uh, uh, very similar to the, um, the cam operation, we have the ability to view what's happening to the toolpath layer after layer after layer. And here we're seeing an animation of how the toolpath is progressing uh, over the layers. I have the capability to pause this and use the drag option on the bottom. Right, and, and see how the parts building layer after layer. I can see with different colors the objects, such as uh, the supports versus the uh, the rest of the geometry and uh, the different features of that geometry being built up. And uh, finally, I have a little bit of an information about the layer count and the the number of layers that we're uh, going to have in the the current layer we're visualizing. And uh, when all of that looks good, I can go ahead and post process and the post process option basically takes the uh, uh, the post that I have selected, which in my case was the uh, Ultimaker 2 post that I have chosen, and uh, asks me for a name and a folder. So I can say I want to save that on my desktop, and I want to give it a name, for example, dash 1, and give it a little comment here, choose my units, and generate the post, which will create the... Um, uh, the G code for me, right? So, and then if if I didn't have this post selected, uh, which I did in the beginning, I can always go to search for posts, and when I do, it will bring up the HSM post library. And as you can see down here, we're going to have by the release uh, several posts available uh, when we search by the type additive, and also they will be available by uh, typing the name of the post uh, uh, that we're looking for. And uh, with that, so let's go ahead and hit post, which will generate the G code for me. And uh, uh, once it's generated, I will be able to look at it in, in a text editor. And uh, as you can see, it's the, the G code. And it also gives me information about um, you know, um, the different uh, comments that I may have put in there. And uh, finally, I can take this G code file. And in this case, uh, that it's going to take a certain amount of time in seconds. Uh, I can take this information directly into uh, my printer and, and hit print. And that is the uh, end of the demonstration for using a uh, 
um, pre-populated printer. And of course, much like uh, the cam operation, I can create a new printer entirely. All I have to do is go into the machine library and say I want to either create a new machine or if I've already created a machine, I can import that machine in here. Right in this case, I have a machine that I've already pre-populated and I can, uh, if you want to right click, you can say edit this and add more information such as uh, you know image or comments and descriptions and vendor and they will show up, uh, any custom printer that you populate will show up in your you know, local or cloud library going forward from that point on. And, you, you know, you can save that file and share it with others in your organization as well. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the uh, additive group uh, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks.